Do we look okay? Yeah. Presentable? Yes, sir. Alright, uh, I don't need it, I guess so. I need it. Yeah, don't get the tissue, Abel. Don't get some tissue in the moment. <laughs> I didn't know that was going to be at the end, so I'm going to hold it. I said, Lord, hold it back. I said, let her get it right. I said, Jesus. Count us in, girl. God, I ask that you will be in the midst. You said whether two or three are gathered in your name, you'll be here, God. And God, I say that we are gathered in your name, in the name of Jesus, God. God, I ask that you will speak through us, God. God, let us be in our flesh. Humble our spirits. Humble our minds. Humble our hearts, God. Just speak through us. Help us to say whatever we need to say that we don't even know we need to say, but somebody may need it. So we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay. I'm excited. Welcome back, you guys. It is episode five. We just Woo! came out of consecration yes. and prayer. God has been, been coming through like a mighty Russian wind. Yes. And he has just been so faithful. We so <laughs> <laughs> what about? He has just been so yes. faithful and we are so glad. Yes. Today we have sis Thomas T. Yes. Y'all, I hope y'all got y'all, you know, snacks that you're comfortable, got your, you know, your drinks, your bed clothes on, just relaxing, yeah, have your notepad, yeah. somebody, because this episode is about to be so much full of wisdom. This woman, yeah. God, right here, one, this woman, God, right here, uh, y'all don't even know. Yes. Also, we have a special guest coming on towards the end, so mm -hmm. make sure you stay. That's for the faithfuls. That's for the ones yes. that watch them. Don't be skipping. Don't be skipping. How about you? Don't be skipping. Don't be skipping. Need y'all to lead up. Don't That's be skipping. I'm so happy to be here to come in the glory. I'm so excited. Can't wait for this. What's in store? God, do it. He's going to do it. Yes. This is our first episode back. Like she said, we are back. I know we were gone for a long time. Okay, and we did our two short but two we did we did our two consecration videos y'all consecration time be busy it really be busy but we are so happy to be back and god has poured into us so now like we promised we're pouring back into y'all so today's episode topic is about intercession and brotherly love and i'm here to give you my definition about intercession um i got where i got out of it when you know i heard about intercession to intervene um on behalf of others so one thing uh, when I was studying and just going in about what intercession means, it came to me to act, to intervene. So to take action, um, to pray, of course, to pray on behalf of others. You never know what others are going to. To maybe sacrifice for others, to maybe go through for others. Long suffering, y'all, it's, it's important. It's right. important. And for me, when I research intercession, something that's um, stuck out to me, I'm going to read it, um, what it said. It said, intercession is an act of selflessness, a choice to step into a situation that requires you to come alongside another's battle. And that, when I read that, I was like, hold on, let me just copy and paste it because I don't know if I can say that as good as they said it. Because that, I, when I think of it, that's a really good definition of intercession because it is, it is selflessness, self, selflessness because you're praying for other people, you're pleading on their behalf, you know. So it really is because you could be, like during consecration, our pastor kept telling us, pray for somebody else. Like stop just praying for yourself, pray for somebody else. So you have to deny your flesh. You may have problems yourself. You may have things that you're going through. You may have desires. But intercession is so, it's an act of selflessness because you're thinking to consider another. You know how the Bible says, consider one another. Consider that your sister right. might be going through something worse than you. And you know, you need to intercede on their behalf. So it requires you to step into a situation to come along another's battle. Yeah. You know, we bear them from this then. That'll be. Intercession is, or to intercede is to plead. Mm -hmm. um, so plead, like beg, you know, entreat. So inter to intercede is to plead on someone else's behalf. So intercession, when I think of it, is I'm praying for somebody to God as if I can feel what they feel. That's, right. That's what I think. When I'm interceding with somebody, I just, I find that there is power 
this is what I find, y'all. When I pray for people, I find that there's power in, like, my moans for people. Mm -hmm. Like, right. I really just, I moan as if I can feel what they're feeling yes. until God takes over. Like, I'll just moan and be like, God, like, you know, like, if I just, I can fit, make a picture of them in my mind and be like, God, just, you know, I don't know everything. I can't exactly feel how they feel, but I try to so that my prayer can be, you know, like, I'm really, yeah, on our, yeah. yeah. like, right. I try to really feel what they could possibly be feeling so that my prayer can be really sincere and real and he can really honor that and help that person. So, I think of it, it is, like, to plead, because I be pleading for people. I feel like that's what intercession is. You you can intercede for a very long time for somebody just to make sure that they get what they need. So. Um, and our three theme scripture is 2 Corinthians 1 and 4. Who comforted us in all our tribulation? That we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. That scripture is so good to me because basically it's saying because God comforts you, you comfort other people. Because you know how it is to be comforted. Because God, God's love. You know how it is to feel love because of God's love. So because you know how it is to feel love, now you're like, I want to show other people. God comforts me so that I can comfort you when you're weak. So that I can know how to comfort, so I can know the words to speak, the words that God speaks to me, the scriptures God speaks to me. When I'm low, I should be able to speak that to me. So I'm here to talk about um I talk about my what like intercession for me, what God gave me, um, which was Romans 8 and 26. Okay. Let me have a Oh, Consecration might have done sped up my, my turn, my Amen. turn face, because I'm mad now, hallelujah. You ain't got to go to the context anymore. I have KJV, I read it in KJV, but then I was like, hmm, I just want to go a little bit deeper, and you know, just dig a little deeper. Dig deeper. So, I, this is NIV's version, and I love this version. This version because it's just so powerful to me. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit Himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Yes. I what I got out of this was, y'all, you don't have to speak. The Holy Ghost will speak for you. That's why you need Him on the inside because it's like you could be going through something and it's like you feel you got you're depressed, you have anxiety, you have no peace, you can't sleep at night, and it's like with all this going on, you want to pray for all of it at the same time, but it's like you don't know what to do. So therefore, it's just like even if you just lay upon your face and just cry out to God, God will understand that because it's He knows what's in your heart, He knows what's in your mind. And so I feel like that was just something that needed to be said because it's just so powerful. Like, you know, oh, praying is clapping and coming from your mouth when all you have to do is just cry out to the Lord because he is your God. Amen. And there can be times, like, have y'all ever had that time when y'all can get words out? All you can do is just... Yes, consecration. Grown. All you can do is cry. All the time. Even when I think of the scripture, though, and I told Ty, when I thought about how the Spirit makes intercession for us, mm -hmm. I thought about how there's be, there has been times, and there's times where I'll be praying, right? And, like, the Holy Ghost will take over, like, the um, um, speaking in tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, almost like it just keeps flowing. I'm just like, God must be, Jesus must be praying. You know, I'm like, I don't know what I'm saying. But it's like the Spirit is That's making right. intercession for me. Like, something is being said in the Spirit. The Comforter is praying for me. And I don't know what I need. I don't know why. Because, you know, I might be trying to pray words. And the Spirit just keeps, you know, overflowing with, you know, whatever he's speaking through me. So I think of it as, like, the Spirit is making intercession for me. Maybe Jesus is praying for me right now. Because, you know, Jesus prays for us. So I'm like, maybe Jesus is praying for me for something that I don't even know what, even know that I need. So... Well, my take on intercession pretty much is, like how you said earlier, a selfless ad for another person. If it's either your family member or your brother or your sister or someone that you don't even know. Mm -hmm. A lot of times there are people that's going through so much and they don't share. Yeah. That's why it's so important to have, first and foremost, be saved. Mm -hmm. right. Sanctified yes. in the Holy Ghost Holy field. Ghost and with the Holy Ghost comes with discernment and with discernment discernment will let you know like even if a person don't tell you what they're going through mm -hmm. by discernment mm -hmm. 
it'll let you know what's going on with them. And God, a lot of times, won't even lead you to approach them and ask why. He'll just lead you to fall on your face and just pray. Yes. And a lot of times, through your prayers, their breakthrough and deliverance come. Mm -hmm. yes. So it's so important to be led and guided by God and to have discernment of the Spirit and to have the Holy Ghost. And to just be fully saved, delivered, yes. and set free. Yes. All chains that need to be broken <laughs> right. so that you can get your breakthrough. Because Amen. a lot of times when you don't have that, then you lack that communication with God, and mm -hmm. you also lack the discernment, so you would know, because everything, you don't have to ask. Yes. You don't have to be like, are you okay? Are you fine? Mm -hmm. Just walk with God. He will lead and guide you, and he will let you know what's what, and everything is not meant for you to go and make it known that you know. That's it's true. just meant for you to just fall on your knees and pray for that person. Yeah. And a lot of times, we, in due time, the chains of the enemy will break. Mm -hmm. It will break. She said to keep praying, warning the spirit on that person's path. That's good. That's, that's so good, good because good. I even it came that's to my good. memory. Like there's been a time where I remember I remember God laid somebody on my heart and on my mind and somebody texted me asking about kind of like asking about this person after I was just thinking about them. I'm like, oh my goodness, like I just felt like this pull to pray for them. So I stopped, but I, I wanted to go eat y'all. I was hungry. I wanted to go eat some cereal. But I felt like I couldn't. Like, I felt like this weight. I'm telling you, not a weight, but I felt like I was I was about to go eat. I was about to go in the kitchen to eat, y'all. Oh, but, goodness. like, after that, I was like, God, like, I just felt like this pool that I couldn't lose. I couldn't shake it. Like, I felt like if I was trying, if I wanted to go to try to eat, if I was to go and try to eat, mm -hmm. like I was still gonna be unsettled because right. I felt like I had. I was telling you something. I could not. Right there. I could not shake That's it, right. and I started praying for them. But I was like, God, like, do I text them? Like, are you trying to tell me I pray now, or you want me to text right. them? But for her to hear, to hear her say that sometimes God will lay. A lot of the times, God will lay something on your heart, or like I'll let you know something. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you have to go say anything, and I didn't. But it was something in my mind that I was kind of bad at it. Like God, I pray for them. So do you want me to go text them now? But I didn't because I didn't want to be out of His will. That's but I, mean. I didn't know for sure. But that's really good to hear. Yes. You don't yes. always have to say yes. something. You don't. And a lot of times He'll let you know what to do and to do it because. Um, a lot of times when you feel that pool, like how you said, you felt like you really, really want to eat. <laughs> I but wanted knew, to eat, y'all. But you knew you could not at that I moment. And a lot it. of times that particular person is going through something at that given moment. Yes. Where it's meant for you to intervene on their behalf uh -huh. at that moment. And a lot of times it can't work. Mm -hmm. So you did the right thing. Yes. So and that's crazy work. because I later found out something about that person. And I was like, wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. God, that was a bit, I don't know what was going on that night or that, because like, I don't know what's going on. But it was just like, wow, like, God, that was that had to be you. Right. I didn't know why I was praying, but I just could not shake it. So God is good. He loves his children. Yes. It takes a lot for, well, it took a lot for Jada to leave her cereal alone to go pray for somebody. And that was love, y'all. <laughs> so our next topic is brotherly love. Um, God had gave me this scripture and also a testimony behind it. I want to tell you guys after. Um, but... John 15 and 13. So I have this scripture has just been with me ever since I got saved and I've gotten new friends in Christ. And Hallelujah. It's just it's just touched me every time I read it. John 15 and 13. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So, don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. It's, okay. it's just it's just loading. No, no, no. It's, it's it's fine. It really is fine. <laughs> we, can, we can share mine if we need to I'm share. Sorry, if we need to share. You want to use my phone? Okay. Look, love. Yeah. That's love. That's love. All right. Um, John 15 and 13 says, Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I might start tearing up, y'all. I, when I was studying, I was going through this, and um, I was talking with Jada and stuff. I had came to realization that he, even though he said lay down his life for his friend, it might not actually mean, you know, die for your friend. That's yes, right. you can die for your friend, but lay down your life, lay down your worldly life and get and go to God because when you're in the world, you can't do nothing for your friend, but when you're in Christ, you can pray for them, Come on. intercession, That's and right. you can help them get through. Um, lay, don't only lay down your life, lay down a sacrifice for them, fast for them. Pray for them. Yes. Do what you have to do for your friend. Deny your flesh. Deny, 
That's why I didn't have your question. And the reason I said I had a testimony about this because I had a close family member that I was very close with. We used to be like this, y'all. And then, you know, after I had gave my life to Christ and after I had started, you know, God started distancing us because, you know, you're not supposed to, you know, partake with the world. Mm -hmm. So, um, recently, during consecration, actually, I was on a trip with this person and it got to a point where we had a session together and she just started to cry out to me and she just, and she just said, like, I'm so grateful that, you know, you gave, you gave your life to Christ, that you laid down your life to Christ because when you lay down your life, you lay down your life to help me get through my life. And that just touched me so yes. much. Because it's like, I used to run in behind this person. I used to want to be like this person. And now it's like, for me, like, it just changed me so much. Because for you to be older than me and for you to, like, look up to me mm -hmm. and to think, like, to acknowledge that I know, for you to know that I can help you get to where you need to be. Yes. It's just, oh! Y'all, y'all, somebody touch their dicks like they will be a witness. Be a when I read it, I don't think about that. I'm thinking about Jesus laid down his life for us, right? You know, but for her to think about when you, because we die, um, nevertheless, nevertheless, I live, not yet I, but Christ lives in me. So we die. When we get saved, our flesh dies. We die, we die. So we're crucified with Christ, right? But I love how she said it, how because of her death, meaning by that, like, dead to sin, dead to sin. Her um, cousin is now looking up to her, like, because she died, now her cousin can live because she's looking at her as an example, seeing her life, being encouraged, like, I can live holy if Ty can live holy. We were out there in the world together. Um, when Ty just gave her testimony, um, it just the Lord just placed in my spirit that that's why it's so important to stay positioned, yeah. to do his will and to do his way, because you don't ever know how your life may affect another person's life. It's also important to always be in that place and set that example, that godly example, because through your godly example, then that person get to see God, especially if it's a person that's never, ever experienced God on a personal level, had that, you know, that spiritual experience. Now, a lot of times they don't know how mm -hmm. God is going to move and what God can do. But through your life, your mm -hmm. lifestyle, yeah. um, setting that godly example, being that example for them, how it helped lead her cousin to a better place to want to desire and to, to want to know yes. him. And it's so important to not straddle the fence, mm -hmm. don't do things that you shouldn't, and then always walk uprightly because you someone is always watching. Watching. They're always watching. And they're watching even when you think they're not watching. Yeah. <laughs> they see I everything and they're <laughs> noticing <laughs> they're yeah, noticing you everything you about you. Everything. Because they're always waiting for you to do something that's mm -hmm. not of God. So they can be like Oh, I thought you didn't say I thought you were saying you're, you're not, not that holy. holy. Yeah, you, know? you, you ain't holy like you said. You're not where you're supposed to be because you're doing what I'm doing. Uh -huh. So when you stay in position and remain in position, God can get the glory out of your life. And look, God can get the glory out of her life. Uh, so, Y'all, and she's to use her Bible. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, do it, God. I love this story. God gave it to me, brought it to my attention, and I saw it in a different light. You know, people probably saw it. Other people might have saw it this way already, but the way it broke it down to me, he broke it down to me, was very profitable for, for me. Profitable for doctrine. Mm -hmm. Mark 2, and we're going to start at the second verse. Okay. Amen? Y'all got it? Um... No, that's bad. I, I have an alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Not alphabetical order. Alphabetical I order. I, I know. Know. That's how I was kind of like. <laughs> if y'all have y'all Bibles in alphabetical <laughs> order, please calm it down. Yes. Save time. I feel like that's just that's just how it's supposed to be. Like, I know that's not how it is, but I just feel like that's just me. I'm sorry. LOL. That's Did you find me. it? Okay. okay yeah. now. Mark 2. Is it a KJV? Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, no, mm -hmm. it's an NIV. Oh, oh Lord. Yeah, that's what you oh, Jesus. Please just give me short words. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, and straightway, many were gathered together, insomuch that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And we're talking about Jesus, y'all. He mm -hmm. preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, and bringing one sick of palsy, which was born of four. Which I didn't know that, y'all, but he was saying that, like, because I thought that meant, like, 
he had palsy starting at the age of four. But if you search okay. up the word born, it means like to bear. Mm -hmm. So pretty much they were saying four people were carrying the one that was with palsy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. That was crazy. So was which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And if we go down to the 11th verse, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go, go thy way into thine house. Amen. Y'all, that um story, I, it, I was so full off of it. I was so full off of it. And from that, I'm going to read y'all what I wrote and break it down. But um, these are the friends or people you want God to place around you. He didn't get through to Jesus by himself. That's right. People that was around him, the four people that was around him, whoever helped, took the roof off of the house to help the one with sick get to Jesus. Those whose faith, those whose faith with works, so that wasn't dead faith, that was faith with works. So those whose faith with works can bless you. God saw their faith. And not only healed the one with palsy, but forgave him of his sins. So their faith made him whole. So that was good to me because when we read about the woman with the issue of blood or blind Bartimaeus, I think it's both of those instances where Jesus says, um, thy faith hath made thee whole. Mm -hmm. This, I've never seen it like this. He said their faith. And it was like, let me go to it. Their faith. Where is that? Oh, the fifth verse, and when Jesus, when Jesus saw their faith. So it wasn't just about the one with the sick of the palsy, but his friends, the people that helped him. When Jesus saw their faith, that made him, he said unto the sick of palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And later on in the verse, he said, okay, arise and get up. So I thought about how their faith, you know, his faith plus his friends, his, his faith plus the people that was surrounded by him that helped him get to Jesus, their faith made him whole. Not only was he healed, but he was forgiven of his sins. Y'all, yeah. that was so good to me. I, we, should, we should have that those people surrounded by us right. where our faith or our future can rely on their faith. Yeah, their faith. Because if they did it, if he, he obviously possibly couldn't get, through, get to Jesus by himself, mm -hmm. but if not for their faith to take the whole roof off of the ceiling, to get him to Jesus, that made him whole. And I just, that was just so good to me. So I'm like, wow, usually you see thy faith have made thee whole. But no, he said, not just yours, but the people around you. So be careful about who you put around you because they can really either hinder you or push you. Push you. Okay, um, Luke 15 and 9. I, I read this. I believe it was Jada that I had read it to. And when we read it, when I read it, I think, what did you say? You were like, you didn't think that that was in there. But it was a good scripture. That was, oh my goodness, my game is so much better now. I, I don't know what happened to my game. Oh, I was like, oh, that was, that's in the Bible. But then after I went, I was like, oh, I'm kind of, it's kind of coming together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Luke 15. I, I don't know where it went, you guys. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I have lost. I was once lost, but now I am found. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I just feel like that um that kind of ties in with what I was just talking about a while ago about how you know my cousin was talking about how she was glad that I laid down my life there with her life. If I wouldn't have, like if I I felt like if I wouldn't have found God and I wouldn't show my my joy for God. Mm -hmm. She would, and I wouldn't find my missing piece. God was my missing piece. I feel like if I wouldn't have done what I did, she wouldn't have found her missing piece either. And I just feel like it was just so touching and so moving because it says, "Rejoice with me," yeah. meaning go out there, go out there and rejoice with those. Go out there and rejoice, and show the people that are lost what you're rejoicing for. So that they can come back and they can say, well, I found my missing piece too. So now let's gather up together and, and rejoice. rejoice together. Yes. yes. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Yes. That's good, time. God is just so good, you guys. Yes. Go tell somebody, y'all. Go tell, tell somebody, somebody you found your, your missing piece. Yes. And don't somebody be ashamed to, oh, don't be ashamed to, like, spread the gospel of Jesus. Because he's, he's not ashamed of you. If you be ashamed of him, he's gonna be ashamed of you. Mm -hmm. It says that, and so what? That's a bad place to be in. When God is ashamed of you, mm -hmm. so I want to be in that position.
selfish. Me neither. <laughs> Yeah. We have to always keep in mind that God is always number one and that we have to always redirect ourselves back to the throne regardless of the situation because a lot of times the devil place things at your feet mm -hmm. as a distraction. Yes, just a So, try. yeah, because he already knows God's plan for you, God's plan for you. So if he can do anything to distract that plan, it could be something simple as trying to manager or supervisor try to add an extra day now that supervisor know you don't work on sunday right <laughs> yeah, no, I know you don't work on sunday. they try that too and try to try that mm -hmm. to kind of keep you distant from what god has for you so you're right you have to constantly stay in your word stay before him lay before him mm -hmm. fast and praying because i mean it's so easy to be distracted and that's what god just brought back to my memory the verse um i had to go because i wrote it down and i was like we might not get to it but he just brought back to my memory um, 1 Corinthians 10 and 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. That scripture to me is like, basically, you think you good. You think, you know, I'm in a pretty cool, cool, cool place. Like, I've been doing what I've been doing. I can feel him every now and then. But every wherefore, now. right, wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed. You better listen, search yourself, read the scriptures, lest he fall. Morning glory, evening manna. In morning glory, they would have us um, have our bottle of oil. Mm -hmm. And we'd be in our different homes. But on the prayer line, they would have us anoint ourselves. And they would pray over whatever part. Anoint our eyes, whether it's to focus. Anoint our minds to think those things we should. Anoint mm -hmm. our, and even coming out of consecration, I still try to do that. Because yes, I recognize that. What? Like, those are your gateways. You have to guard your gateway. We talked about that. I forgot what episode. But guard your gateway, guys. I think it was three. Was it three? Or two. Y'all, somebody put in the comments because we don't know. Please. But, you think it was three? It was three. She better know, Jason. This is a real faithful. Yeah, she's real faithful. Real faithful. I yeah. that she's real faithful. But pretty much, I've still been trying to do it. And I'm like, God, anoint me to live holy. Yes. Anoint my eyes to focus. Anoint my mind to think of those things that are pure, holy, true. You know, going through the scripture. Just that I just don't want to mess up. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to. Because when we don't start our day, how we should, it can mess up our whole. We can be disconnected and be like, dang, why was the day of that day? Well, I didn't read. I didn't pray. So Never get so busy that you don't have time for God. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of times we get so busy in life mm -hmm. where God's supposed to be number one. He ends up taking a back seat to all the list of things you have to do throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And I was one of those ones that sometimes it will be like that for, for me, being a mom and being married and having a household, mm -hmm. it would be days where I would have days where I couldn't pray like I wanted to, mm -hmm. read my word like I wanted to. But like Minister Chambers said today, you have to make time for those things. Yes. Still away in your closet, still away in the corner. Honey, sometimes I prayed in the car. Yeah. I'd be in the car rolling. I mean, driving around line, I'm just pleading the blood. Jesus, cover yes. him, cover him, Lord. Do it, Lord. And I mean, you have to just, it's just the sacrifice. I mm -hmm. believe with all my heart that God honors your sacrifice and when he sees that you're trying because every single time you're not gonna always be you be able to get on your knees mm -hmm. and just you know be on your pillow and just kneel down but every moment that you can be prayerful be prayerful mm -hmm. i make sure i do it earlier in the day mm -hmm. I, I have to do it like that for me because it helps me because it's hard for me to get to god when i'm sleeping that's good. No, just, that's my mama, y'all. <laughs> my mama says she can't hear God when she's sleeping. I cannot hear him at all. That's what she says. <laughs> um, so, I also have 2 Corinthians 12 and 10. And it says, Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. That was good to me because... Here at the light, I can't speak for every everybody else's church, but the light church family is like none other. We are a true family. We pick each other up when we're down. We correct each other when we're tripping. Right. Like we are a true family. It is just, you know, of course it can cut when you get, you know, your sister say, hey, get together. This and this is true. what I needed to hear. You know, you just have to come to that realization. That brotherly love. That yes. brotherly love. And that's why I, this scripture spoke out to me because out of all those things, the reproaches. Therefore, I take pleasure in reproaches. And reproach is the expression of disapproval or disappointment. So having a sister or brother in Christ to tell you like, hey, like, you know, you should have did that. Or you come to them out of a situation and you expected them to be on your side and they're like, Y'all understand you're feeling this way, but why'd you say that? Would God 
have wanted you to say that or why did you act that way? You shouldn't have done that. Or you're tripping in this area. Where you been? You're not at certain place. Where, you know? And that happened to me. And I thought about somebody in particular that goes to my church. And um, that day, that I, that part of that day, I was just, uh, I was feeling heavy. I was feeling heavy. And this girl, I mean, I love her. Shout out to you, you if you know who you are. But <laughs> this girl, I'm like feeling heavy. I'm telling her what I'm feeling. She's like, Jada, get up. Like, Jada, okay, I understand. Like, but blah 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 like she was like pretty much like she was hearing me and telling me but at the same time she was like okay jada but okay we, we're not going to, she told me this is what she told me <laughs> she told me okay you can sit here and be upset for 10 minutes she gave me 10 she minutes. gave me 10 she minutes, gave me 10 minutes y'all she gave me she 10 minutes it's like if you linger in there uh -huh. it's like right. you're gonna slowly yes yeah. collapse and then yeah, it's we'll like take over mm -hmm. you get stuck there you mm -hmm. stuck and then it's like oh help me help me help me when god sent somebody to help you but mm -hmm. you don't want to you don't want to hear them you wanted to seek in your sorrow mm -hmm. and so now god is like okay i'm gonna let you stay there for a little bit and, and now it's hard try to, to get out it is now it's hard because you done sunk you so put low yourself in a hole. so i recognize like no she it was like a oh like I know how that's how she is already, so it didn't really come and catch me off guard. But she gave me, y'all, I'm not playing. She gave me 10 minutes. She's like, you can be upset for 10 minutes. After that, let's go. Got to keep it moving. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, and to hear that, it yeah, really yeah. did. Yeah. After I continued to talk with her, I, I was like, so I get a smile on my face. I just felt more strength. Yeah, I felt right. like more, the word she was speaking to me was that of God, you know, speaking life into me and telling me the truth that I maybe didn't want to hear. It, but the fact that, okay, things happen. Now what? You know, exactly. things are going to happen. That's life. But do we stay there? You know, give sometimes maybe we just need to tell each other, hey, you got five minutes to be like this. I have. I, have. I feel like we have yeah. similar people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been through it before plenty of times in the past. And you have to really know the difference between godly correction and church hurt. Yeah. A lot of people tie godly correction as church hurt. That's good. And that's not so. Yeah. Um, your sister in Christ, your brother in Christ can come to you in a godly manner and tell you, sis, you shouldn't do this, uh, mm -hmm. brother, you shouldn't do that, without you taking it as, you know what, you know, they're trying to yeah. call me out. They they're against trying, me. Oh, yeah. no, they're trying to single. They know I'm sensitive in that area. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, do you want to walk in what's right or do you want to remain in yourself and be worried about sensitivity? Because right. in Christ, you got to make sure you're doing what God will have you to do, not what you're comfortable with. And if it's not what God wants you to do, it's not his word, you don't need to be doing it. And if your sister or brother see that it's not right. They're trying to help you. And they're trying to help you, it's not church hurt. I just want to clarify yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. Not you need to clarify hurt. for the people. Please. It's not them. church hurt. It is godly correction. Godly. And when you're led and guided by God to go to your sister or your brother about something, you supposed to be in a place with God to not take it as them trying to mm -hmm. shut you down mm -hmm. or make you feel some type of way. Because when you're connected to God, it's all about doing his will. Yes. It's all about staying in his will. So you will want your sister or brother to um, correct you. you. If they see you doing something that you clearly... You may not be aware that it's wrong, that is but wrong. they see that, okay, she's going down the wrong path mm -hmm. right now. This is not right. So a lot of times we as saints of God, we kind of like blot out, oh, church hurt. And it don't really be like that. It don't. It's just a fence. Your, you sister, you your, sister, your sister in Christ just went to you and corrected you and you didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And it was what was for you yep. and what needed to be said because they were led and guided by God by to God. do that. Yeah. But you didn't like it. So it has to be a difference in that. <laughs> and a lot of people don't know the difference. They, they don't. Mm -hmm. That's good. And if That's somebody, good. and if they seen it, somebody else probably seen it, might have seen it too, but they didn't like want to say anything. And so it's like when somebody comes to you and says something, you should take that as like love. Like, oh, they care enough to, you know, let me know about myself and are like, you Tell know. Tell me the truth. Yeah. Right. I want to know the truth. <laughs> God brought back to my remembrance something that I studied this week. Proverbs 18 and 19. And it says, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. And their contentions are like the bars of a castle. And I had never read that before until I think it was this week. God is so good. The Holy Ghost brings so back to y'all with Because mm -hmm. I didn't know I was going to bring this out. But as she was speaking, because a lot of the time it's not church hurt. It's just offense. It's sensitivity and immaturity. Mm -hmm. That's what my pastor told us before. A lot of times church hurt, really, that's like a mask word. It is. But it's immaturity. Mm -hmm. 
because real, you know, mature as you grow, things, okay, things gonna hurt, have your moment, but at the end of the day, maturity says, they were, the, they were right. Yeah, it hurt, true. it cut, but God yeah. chases those that he loves. He's trying that's to, right. he's trying to, you know, get something out of this. This is a learning experience. Yeah. We're not yes. defeated, we're learning, but you're gonna be defeated if we don't, if we're not willing to learn. Do the word you say when you start, you have to say the list. He has amen. 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 The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. For ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out, of, out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh king of Egypt. Now therefore that thy now therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations, and will pay it them that hate him to their face, to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day to do them. So from that scripture, um, what really stood out to me was the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. Mm -hmm. For you were the fewest of all people. So from that I was like, with brotherly love and praying for other people, we should always be in that position ready to pray somebody else, pray for somebody else. Mm -hmm. Because you're not, God loved you. He didn't choose you because you higher, greater. Right. It says right here, you you was the fewest of all people. Come on. So that's worth some of you. You were like the fewest. You were out there in the streets one time, clubbing, sinning, all the stuff that we shouldn't be doing. So why, instead of running people away, why are we not praying for people? Like, we we supposed to look at people that come into the church and be, like, have compassion for them. That's right. See, not just, like, maybe they're evil, but see that that's a soul. That's somebody that needs to be saved. Like, and I get very emotional when it comes to, um, like, when people are at the altar and they're praying, crying out to God, it's like that intercession. Like, I just want to pray for yes. them. I just want to, like, they don't got to know that I'm praying, but I will be going in for somebody. And they don't even have to know. <laughs> they don't even have to know. But I'll be going in for somebody because I'm just having, it's like this compassion, the love of God. Like, I just want them to be free. And sometimes you can see it on people, especially if I can see yes. it, that people are crying out to God and you can see the sincerity, at least to my best ability, it looks like sincere to me. So to me, it looks like sincerity. It makes me just like so, it softens my heart. And I'm just like, God, do you see them? Yes. And I've asked that. I've, and there's been times where I've said that a lot, like, God, do you see your people? Do you see what I see? I'm looking out and I see sincere cries. Do you see them? These, like, you know, I just want God to come through for us, not just me, but for other people. And then it's such a joyous occasion when God does it, and you're like, I pray for that. So I'm praying for this person, I believe in God, and I'm like, God, y'all, what's up? I'm like, God, they gonna wake me up in the middle of the night and call me, saying that they want me to lead them in prayer. They did not call me that night. And I was like, hey, y'all, that Sunday, it was on my, like, I pray, I said, God, and this was a... Another thing for me is the devil has tried to fight me. I don't think I'm the only one, but the devil has tried to fight me with not playing, praying specific prayers. Because if you pray sp specific prayers, it seems more impossible. Yes. Like, rather than saying, God, save them today, just say, God, save them for the year is over. Oh, my goodness. You know, yeah, like. I love that. I was you just, just over this. You know, I'm glad you said that. You know? I was going to add to that, but you already had said it, so to God be the glory. You know? <laughs> I think it's glory to God. I was just about to say, um, you have to be specific in what you um, put before the Lord, because a lot of times, God knows all, and I know that he knows all, he knows everything about us, mm -hmm. but there's a, I, 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 honestly, I was always taught there's a certain way you have to pray, and when you pray, you have to be specific. Mm -hmm. If that person is going through certain things in their life, if you know what it is, you speak to that thing, you mm -hmm. actually go and you call out whatever yep. that thing is. If they're dealing with smoking cigarettes, you call out, Lord, please deliver them from cigarette smoking. Um, if they're dealing with um, a person that's dealing with things of the flesh, mm -hmm. um, they may be going back and forth with this person and that person. You have to pray in particular about what those things, those are, things are if you, know. you yeah. know. If you know, and if you do know, be very specific about it, and God will come through. He will do those things. 
And I love the fact, because my mom always taught us that. She was like, you have to really tell God what. Mm -hmm. Even though he knows, but state it. Make yeah. the devil out of a lie by, you know, decreeing it mm -hmm. completely out of your mouth. But you're not leaving no room for the devil right. to try to go. No, yes. I'm talking about this, this spirit. <laughs> this, this spirit. This spirit. I'm talking about that spirit. Right? The depression, that one. I'm yes. calling you out. But that day, I'm telling you, I had big faith. God just gave it to me for that person. Because I'm telling you, I was like, this is not like me. You know, it's not to have this much faith. Right. But I was like, God, save it today. Put the Holy Ghost today. And I went to the altar on behalf of that person and me. But I was like, God, I'm going on behalf of them too. I didn't see them get up and go to the altar. So it was like, okay, you know, I'm just going to go for yes. them and for me. I went to the altar, y'all. I was crying out to God, crying out to God, crying out to God. And um, after service, you no, know, after I went back to my seat, I looked out to see, like, if they were in praise or if they were at the altar. No, nothing. They were they were still in their seat, and I'm like, Are you serious? Like, you know, like God, that was this that was discouraging. But I said, like, No, God, you're still able to do it. You can still save them. Tell me why after church, y'all, after church, she came to me and we were hugging, and she told me she went to the altar and she got saved. I just Thank missed it because I went to the altar and she went after me. And guess what she was, y'all? She was like two people behind me. And I had no idea. So she went to the altar after I went and then she left before I left. So to me, all I saw was her. But it was just because we went and left at different okay. times. But I found out that she got saved that I said, no, you did it. And you were behind me. God did it without me knowing. Y'all, and I have pictures from that day. I was just looking at it. Somebody took pictures because they were like, what's going on? Because I was so dramatic. So I was hugging on them, and the mom came, and she was hugging. And I was like, God, like, I didn't, he did it without me knowing. Yes, that's how he worked. He is just so, <sighs> he's so good. He's so thoughtful. Like, he is, so thoughtful. and faithful. So exactly. So imagine how much, so that goes to show you do not know, intercede for other right. people. you don't. Intercede for other people because it could be that day. So our last scripture is Joel 2. Starting at the 12th verse. What is your will beside? Joel is beside Jerry Ezekiel. No. Oh, pardon. Hosea. Hosea? Did I say that right? I don't think Hosea. 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 <laughs> Hosea. Hosea, y'all. The chapter, the book of Hosea. The book of Hosea. 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 <laughs> I'm keeping that in there. Joel. I'm so sorry, Lord. <laughs> he knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. He knows. <laughs> Joel 2, starting at the 12th verse to the 14th verse says, Therefore also now said the Lord, Turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning, and wind your heart and not your garments, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent, and leave a blessing behind him? Even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. That's, that's good. That scripture, the, the main verse I want you to focus in on is the 14th verse. Go to God. So it's talking about, you know, turn to the Lord with weeping, with mourning, with praying. It was talking about brotherly love and intercession. So I'm thinking of this as going to God with weeping and praying for other people. Other people. For other people, right? Because guess what? who knoweth if he will return? We're talking about God. If God will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him. So our pastors um, brought that scripture to, you know, I didn't know that scripture until he taught it to us. But um, it just made me think like some people could be out there committing fornication. This is just one thing, right? Committing fornication or a daughter or some, just doing something. And it could maybe God will keep them from, you know, either whether it's having a baby or somebody may be out there at a party where um, shooting, the shooting thing comes on, and God was like, you know, I gave you enough, I gave you enough times, I gave you, <laughs> why are you laughing? <laughs> Did I say something wrong? <laughs> what are you going up? A shootout? Like, <laughs> yeah, a shootout. Y'all special guests don't know how to act. A shootout, y'all. A shootout going on, right? And God is like, he already has it, you know, planned that, you know, I gave them at this many times, you know, I brought a witness before them, they grew up in church, I told them not to go, they've been gone, they've been living in sin, today this is going to happen, today that, that bill is going to hit them, but who knows, because you got on your knees when God placed them in your heart that night, and you didn't resist it, you got on your knees and you prayed for that person, who knows if God will return and repent and say, you know what, I'm going to give them one more time. That one, that one prayer, y'all, God can return and repent. 
That's the guy said, never mind. I, I, I'm giving you one more time. Because your, your sister, your sister. And Pastor that's been that all him. the time. He says, like, yeah, people be like, oh, my prayer work. But, like, you got one step in and one step out. Mm -hmm. No, your prayer didn't work. But somebody else who prayed for you, their that's prayer right. yeah. is grandma, gorgeous. your aunt, your cousin. Second cousin. <laughs> yes, ideas would be like that in my dreams and yeah. how to tell visions and stuff. And I saw blue flashing lights. I was just like, oh my God. So, what I did, I thought was for me. So, I just started praying. I'm like, oh Lord, you know, God lead and guide me, cover my car. I mean, cover the places I'm getting ready to go, Lord. And then I kept feeling it. I kept seeing it. And I kept feeling like something was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, this was during a time where, like, me and my sister, our relationship had, like, kind of like, we were still close, but mm -hmm. spiritually, like, I was in God, doing what I do, serving Him, mm -hmm. and she was doing what she does, and it kind of, like, separated us to a certain mm -hmm. extent, mm -hmm. and lo and behold, she went out, and she got pulled over by the police, and she was so upset, she called me, mm -hmm. she was crying, and then I shared with her, I said, the Lord showed me flashing lights. She was like, you didn't tell me. <laughs> most of the time, After that, she, like, oh, she don't want you to tell you, you don't want to know. You don't want me to go nowhere. You don't want me to do this. And you just trying to do this and stop yeah. doing that. And then she would literally cry. And she was upset with me. She was like, you should have told me. <laughs> if you would have told me, you know I would have listened to you. And I'm like, I know. I said, but normally, I said, okay, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, sis. I got you, sis. All right, we're going to listen from now yeah, on. And a lot of times, like, with that being said, if you are praying for that person at, at that given time, because even even though I did, I thought it was for me, but it was really for my sister. I was, I instantly went in prayer because mm -hmm. when the Lord showed me that, I knew, I just had that feeling. I knew it was going to happen. It was going to take place. I just didn't know when. So I just instantly went in prayer. So that's why it's so important to instantly go in prayer because you don't know who's going to face what. If it's yes. you or sister, brother, or an uncle. So it's best to always be in prayer and do it when God say. That's something that I had to deal with also by Trying to be like, okay, Lord, I'm going to do it in a few minutes. No. If he say pray now, drop what pray you're now. doing, stop what you're doing. You pray right at that given moment. You don't know who you're even interceding for. You don't know if it's for yourself, for your kids. You don't know. So it's blessed. It's best to be humble and to be just doing what God says. Submissive. Yeah. Just like, look, Lord, I'm stopping right now. Yeah. If you cooking, stop cooking. If you're driving, if you got to I'll do it right now. I'll pull it over. Really? My daughter be like, Mama, what you know? I said, I'm getting ready to pray. The Lord said, pray. Sometimes I have to literally pull over in the parking lot, Walmart, yeah. McDonald's, yeah. and a lot of times I have to pray in a certain type of way. So I have to be off the road because I be going in. Uh-huh. Yes, yes. That's so good. Your daughter sees that. Yes. I love she'll that. Like, Mama, what you doing? And most of the time it's like Jayla with me. And she'll be like, Mama, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting ready to pray. I said, I got to. The Lord telling me to pray. And I have to pull off. And so it's so important for you to be obedient, because a lot of times, most people are like, well, I got to get home, you know? Mm -hmm. They just take off down take the road, because yeah. you, know, you don't know. It could be a car accident, Why or a drunk you? driver down the road. Mm -hmm. You know, talking about you not going to pray, mm -hmm. and God clearly told you to, you know? So it's just obedience, everybody. Ooh. Obedience and humbleness. First, you got to, like, humble all that self and wheel. flesh and flesh. wheel, you know? To oh. be able to get to that point. That's good, y'all. Oh my yes. goodness. That's that God deserves to clap yeah, That's right. Thank you. Hallelujah. All right, that concludes the topic of intercession and brotherly love. But there's a but. There's a but. But but we have something special for y'all. We've never done it before. Drum roll, please. Hold on, I'm putting it on the word of God. Sorry. Drum roll, please. My sister. Ah! <laughs> I love her so much. And I said, I don't want to see her die and go to hell. But honestly, it's not difficult when your mind is really actually made up. I ain't bought no vape in a couple of, couple of weeks. And I'm a couple of weeks turned to a couple of months. I'm like, okay.